Okay, so today we are going to look at cold start tuning and we want to start at, well, the basics. I already told you how to set up your base map and you, we are going up from there, but I'm changing a few things depending on what injector size you have because those uh, things might be different. First of all, you want to make sure that you have to have set a priming pulse, which makes the car start cold much better or much easier. In my case, at zero degrees Celsius, I'm using eight to about 10 milliseconds. That is for standard injectors that are between 200 and 300 cc. I'm, I have 310 cc, so I'm using eight milliseconds. If you have large injectors, for example, a thousand cc or something, you would use something very uh, much lower, like uh, four or five milliseconds. Um, but you can look at this, uh, for example. If you have set up idle control, or rather if you your car is already running, make sure the car is running well before you try to start cold start tuning because the cold start is influenced by the fuel map as well. So make sure your fuel map is already dialed in, at least in the idle cells. And if you have a idler control valve running and that is set to um, on or PWM, make sure that if you have already set your idle, um, make sure that your idle PWM cranking duty cycle is about 20% higher than the actual RPM or the actual duty cycle. Today we are going to look at cranking enrichment because cranking enrichment is basically the thing that makes the car want to start. Uh, we have about 5 degrees Celsius here, that's basically the coldest that it gets here, so it's the perfect time to do this and I'm just going to crank the car. As you can see we have set a hundred percent which is too low usually at zero degrees you want between let's say 180 and 220 percent on stock injectors and on larger injectors it would be a bit less. But we're going to try and uh, see what the car is doing now. I may give the car some throttle because I do not have any um, any idler control valves hooked up so this is going to be a bit different as you can see my coolant temperature is three degrees i'm going to also show you how much i am going to push the throttle as you can see down there and we are just going to try and crank it now and see what happens as you can see nothing much the car tries to crank. I also want to advise to you that you should have a charge battery at least. So we are going to step this up to 120%. Ah, and it already started. That's the best case scenario for now. But I would say even if it starts like at that low of a value, you should go and add a bit more fuel so that it starts more reliably. For example, if I put in 140, it should start even quicker. See, it still has a bit of problem. I, Yeah, it still has a bit of, of a uh, hesitation. So I'm gonna turn it off again. The issue is that with cold start, we only have one or two starting or starts until the car or the combustion chamber is warm enough so that we are not really in cold start anymore. I would choose 160 so that we are probably that's probably gonna be very close to what we need. Yep and the car starts very good now. It still cranks a bit but it starts reliably without me putting in any throttle and that's where you can get off of or go off of. For example if you are living in a climate that's even colder you may need more fuel and if you for example run E85 then you may need even more fuel. For example if I put in 200 now the car probably will not start anymore. Okay it still does. There is obviously a range where the car starts and will not start anymore. If you add too much fuel here the car will foul out the plugs or wet out the plugs and has to sit for a while uh, to dry out the plugs itself or you have to pull the plugs to dry them off manually. One thing for example if your car starts but turns off after like a few seconds I can demonstrate this now probably maybe okay I think the car is now 
warm enough so that it doesn't happen. But it doesn't want any throttle because it's just running too lean. Ah. Yep. Um, if, for example, your car is starting but turns off immediately after, then that might be an issue of the after start enrichment not being enough. As you can see here, I have pulled up the after start enrichment. This will be the similar for most cars and will be in between 20 and 30 percent and that for a duration of 10 and uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 seconds um, or whatever this is here in your case calculated to seconds and one thing that's also important because engines like to run really really rich as you can see we are running at uh, an AFR value of 12 right now which is pretty rich but on warm-up this is normal and you see I'm adding a lot of fuel on warm-up here I'm adding about 20% and that's about the rule of thumb you want to be running at somewhere between 12 and 13 on cold start and as I said in my base map uh, guide about 14 to 14.5 when the car is running you also don't want to see massive um, PWM values when you are cranking for example if I show that to you right now we are seeing about 10 maybe uh, I have seen some instances where for example the ECU is doing something wrong and you see like 35 or even 50 milliseconds that would be would be way too much and as you can see the car is now starting very reliably I don't have any issues and it is running well if for example you have problems that the car isn't starting reliably that although your values are correct that the uh, it's like hesitating or it's shooting out the back even though your base timing is correct then you can try to set the skip revolutions to one or two or even more so that the uh, crank signal will only read after the engine has turned about uh, has turned around um, one to three or however many revolutions you set that will take longer for the car to start then but the synchronization of the sensors will take place after the uh, starter has uh, spun the engine to the correct starting RPM and the car will start more reliable than if you have issues for example um, the car not behaving on startup. As I said if you have issues with the RPMs dropping or not being enough and you have to push the gas to get the car to idle uh, and you have idle control and you have PWM idle control if you haven't set it up correctly so that the RPM is held like at a thousand RPM do that and then if on startup you want the RPM to go up a bit and then go back down uh, you can set the PWM cranking duty cycle that is basically when the engine is cranking the intake air control valve is opening up a bit more to let a bit more air into the engine so that the theory will be able to turn a bit faster or will be able to um, run a bit faster once the engine catches or once it's uh, igniting. That's basically it for a cold start. It's really not that difficult. Some, pre some people seem to have a lot of problems with it, but actually it's not really that difficult. That's it from me. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.